A towering 500-foot-tall gray and glowing lava flow creeps forwards at an incredibly slow rate of up to 1 foot an hour. Ash up to 2 feet thick layers the ground, only being broken by occasional fragments of pumice and dark black obsidian. Numerous loud and repeating explosions can be heard, creating large shockwaves and creating ground-hugging plumes of 900 degrees Fahrenheit gas and rock known as pyroclastic flows which race down slope at a speed of 100 miles per hour. As you struggle to walk on the finely grained material as it is much like sand, some lightning is generated due to the rubbing of ash together in the air. The sequence of events I just described might sound like a possible eruption sequence of the Mount St. Helens volcano. Yet, the eruption which was just described did not originate in the continental United States or even Alaska, but rather, to the possible surprise of many, Hawaii. On the big island of Hawaii, it is largely taken for granted that volcanic eruptions are not very explosive due to the highly fluid basaltic lava four separate volcanoes can erupt. This material, which cools as a black color, is known as basalt and can move at a speed of up to 19 miles per hour. Because of this, basalt lava does not pool above an erupting vent, so gas does not get trapped underneath it, allowing the volatile material to escape in an effusive manner as it decasses at a regular rate. Yet, under a specific set of circumstances, two volcanoes could theoretically produce a highly explosive eruption more typical of a stratovolcano, with one specific explosive eruption having occurred 103,000 years ago. This is the story of the highly unusual Pu'u Wa'a Wa'a vent on the northeastern flank of the Hualalai volcano. Zooming in on the vent which bears this name, you might notice some unusual features, including toes of lava and ash in a breach summit crater to the southeast. As, unlike the medium-sized cinder cones seen around the summit region of Mauna Kea, Pu'u Wa'a Wa'a is not a cinder cone. Rather, like the central cone of Oregon's Newberry Volcano, Pu'u Wa'a Wa'a is classified as a pumice cone. As the name implies, pumice cones are largely made out of pumice, but also small amounts of scoria and some obsidian, which overall form in highly explosive eruptions around a central vent. Although other variables exist that control how explosive a volcanic eruption is, such as gas, generally speaking, the more silica-rich a lava type is, the more explosive the eruption it is associated with will be. Kilauea during the last 100 years has almost exclusively erupted basalt, which has more than 45 but less than 52% by weight silica. On the other hand, the lava which Pu'u Wa'a Wa'a erupted had between 57.5% and 69% silica, which was also far more alkali-rich, being known as the rock-type trachyte. The trachyte lava produced during this ancient eruption reached the 570-foot-tall pumice cone it created to the side, going on to form blocky lava flows which were more than 100 feet in height. The trachyte lava flowed up to a distance of 8 miles away, forming a steep blocky ridge which is now the site of the Makani Golf Club. The lava flow took approximately 7 years to cover a total of 9.4 square miles, totaling 4.6 cubic kilometers of material. This was more than the combined lava flows Kilauea produced during its lengthy 1983-2018 to 2018 eruption. The reason this trachyte lava was able to be produced in the first place relates to the stage of its lifespan that Hualalai is at. Shield volcanoes in Hawaiian islands undergo long periods of activity which largely determine the nature of eruptions they produce and their topography. Hualalai entered what is known as a post-shield stage around 105,000 years ago which continues to the present. During a post-shield stage, infrequent eruptions eventually fill in the caldera which once existed, many cinder cones form, and eruptions become slightly more explosive. These eruptions erupt slightly more silica-rich rock with basalt erupting alongside trachybasalt, basaltic tracheandesite, tracheandesite, and trachyte also erupting. This occurs largely through long-term leaching of silica-rich crust into the magma chamber and fractional crystallization, which over time allows basalt to progress to trachybasalt and eventually trachyte. Both Mauna Kea and Hualalai are in their post-shield stages, and only Hualalai, albeit once, has produced highly viscous trachyte lava. The explosive eruption which created the Pu'u Wa'a Wa'a pumice cone and the associated lava flow likely was comparable in explosiveness to the 1914-1917 eruption of Lassen Peak in California, being rated on the Volcanic Explosivity Index as a 3. Although the potential does exist for Hualalai to produce another alkali-rich viscous lava flow in its post-shield stage, the fact that only one such event has occurred in the last 110,000 years suggests that the odds of this repeating are incredibly low in the next few thousand years. 
Hololai will most likely erupt again in the next 1,000 years, but its eruptions will involve either effusive or moderately explosive erupted alkali basalt. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.